I'm Caleb Brooks with the HSA Radio Network. I'm at Spain Park High School, joined by head girls basketball coach, Coach Mike Chase. And uh, Coach, um, you know, this program here is, has been one of the most consistent and one of the most dominant um, in the states when it comes to girls basketball. And, you know, I kind of just want to start there. What, what do you think it is that, you know, has allowed this group to be so consistent and have the success that they've been able to have year in and year out? Um, well, you know, it definitely helps um, the fact that I've been here 11 years and, you know, there's consistency with the program all the way through. Um, you know, if you look at uh, Bill Belichick and Saban and, you know, you look at those guys, you know, the guys that have the same offensive coordinators and have the same coaching staff, you know, and players get to, you know, learn one system and get to stay in that system for multiple years. Um, you know, there's an advantage to it, you know, and, um, you know, but then it's, it's also just the, the total buy-in with the players and the parents and, you know, all that stuff. And it's all the way through. It's whether we fundraise, whether we, you know, go on trips, you know, whether it's in our summer stuff and they have to, you know, like I said, we have six kids that can't drive on our, on our varsity mm -hmm. team. So it's not like if I have a, you know, uh, uh, practices over Christmas or practices over Thanksgiving, those parents are have to make that same commitment. So if they're not bought in, um, you know, getting them to the summer stuff and getting them to everything that we need to do, um, then then our program isn't going to be good. So uh, it's you know it's it's casting the vision, and then you know and then trying to get everybody to buy into what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned, I mean, six players that can't drive. I mean, you got six freshmen and sophomores that are on this team. How have you kind of had to adjust your coaching style to <laughs> having a younger team compared to years past? Yeah, um, you know, when Sarah Ashley was talking about, um, you know, the beginning of the season and, you know, and, and it was frustrating for her, it was frustrating for me. Um, and it's, and, you know, we tried to throw, a, I, I tried to throw a lot out there, some of the things that we've been doing the last couple of years because we had a lot of experienced older kids and they just couldn't handle everything we were putting at them. They couldn't handle, you know, we were on too many offensive sets, we were trying to press, we were trying to do all these different things. And we have really good young players, but if they don't have a comfort level in what they're doing, they just become robots and they just, they just grind to a stop. And uh, so we had to scale back what we were doing. Uh, we took a lot of things out of our playbook. We took a lot of things out and we just tried to simplify it and just get good at it. And then eventually, you know, they got comfortable. They started to be, you know, let their natural athleticism flow through. And then we've been able to add a little bit back to it, but um, it's definitely, you know, I, I got to keep telling myself, you know, Sarah Ashley comes down and throws a bullet pass to a kid and it goes through her hands. And, you know, and in my mind, I'm like, you're playing varsity at Spain Park. You should catch that. And then the next thought is, is well, the last basketball that she played was eighth grade black basketball. Yeah. And she's playing against Hoover. She's playing against Hazel Green. She's playing against Ramsey. And those girls are 17, 18 year old grown women. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and, and so. It's been an adjustment, um, but now we're to the point of the season right now where uh, you're not a freshman or so. We can't, you can't use that excuse anymore. Yeah. Uh, you've, you know, we played 22, 23 games against really good competition. So now you got to make those catches. Now you got to make those switches. Now you got to box that girl out. So, you know, when you consider the fact that now they are more experienced, they have gotten to play a lot more, where have you seen the younger group really improve and, and get better the most, and where have they really kind of helped your team in that area the most? Um, you know, I mean, kind of how it works is is we try to simplify their roles. So, like, for example, some of our post girls that are freshmen and sophomores, um, it's box out, give me a defensive rebound, or when the shot goes up, go get me an offensive rebound. Um, you know, we're not going to ask them to, to do a whole lot of things. And, and if we tell them, you know, these are the two things that, that you absolutely positively have to do, um, it narrows their focus, it makes them more aggressive. And, you know, and, and so um, it's just like when Sarah Ashley was a freshman or sophomore, you know, she had a, a, a more of a supplementary role on our team, you know, and so as she got older, 
you know, we put more on our plate. And just like with Camille and some of these guys that played on the team last year are still younger, you know, and you talked to them a little bit about it, it's your role has to increase as you go along. And so um, when Sarah Ashley graduates, you know, we're going to lose, you know, 25, 26 points a game and 12 or 13 rebounds and steals and all of these types of things. And so next year's group, those guys are going to have to take on those roles and responsibilities. So, um, so yeah, it's just like right now, um, there are certain things that, that, they, that are absolute must that they do. And if they go out and get us six or seven points on offensive rebound putbacks or a steal or something, then we look at that as like gravy, gravy yeah. on top, you know. You know, you mentioned how Sarah Ashley's role has changed and stuff, but when you look at her, you know, being a Georgia signee, she's going, you know, play SEC ball. When you think back to when she was younger and playing, where have you kind of seen her game improve the most? And, and when did you kind of start realizing, hey, we've got a, a special player here that's going to go play at the next level? I mean, I knew she was a special player when she was in sixth grade. <laughs> um, I, I coach our middle school teams as well as our high school team. And, you know, I remember when she came up and, and she was – she was sixth grade and playing in seventh grade and those kind of things. And, and uh, you know, I talked to her parents. She was a three-sport athlete at that point, and I talked to her and her mom about, you know, playing AAU, and I didn't think for a minute that she would give up those other two sports because, you know, AAU is in the spring and in the summer, and it's, you know, it, it conflicts with playing other school sports. Um, and she started playing. And I knew that she was going to be good. I just didn't know that if she continued playing three sports, she could be as good as she could be in just one thing. Um, but, you know, she took off with it, overcome a major injury, didn't play for a whole year. And, uh, you know, but even when she was a freshman or sophomore, like the freshman and sophomores I had, you know, it doesn't matter how good you are. You know, if you, you know, when you're 14 or 15 years old and you're playing, you know, we schedule really difficult. Mm -hmm. And when you're playing the Hoovers and the Hazel Greens and the Ramseys and those guys, and they have, like I said, 17 and 18 year old division one players on there, it, it's, it's hard. And, uh, you know, so she didn't handle the ball very much for us. And, you know, even, even up to, you know, this is the first year that she's been our real primary ball handler, where she's been our point guard almost every possession. And so there was a learning curve there. She had a lot of turnovers early in the season, and you know she was trying to do too much and all that stuff. And and you know now uh, turnovers are down, and and her decision making is on point. She she was having she was she was you know probably having two charges a game because she was jumping into people. You know she settled herself down. She's playing off of two feet. I mean she's just really really improved and learned how to play a different role, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, she, she does a great job for us. You know, you mentioned all the teams that you schedule, um, and obviously you do that to prepare this mm -hmm. group, but, you know, playing against the, the Hazel Greens, playing against the Ramseys, and those teams that are, you know, they're lower classifications, but they're, they're good basketball teams, but how do you kind of get your team, uh, you know, sometimes when a 7A plays, it's, it's they kind of look down, whereas for those teams, they're playing a 7A and they're playing yeah. up because then that's their big game. So how do you kind of get your team to realize that, you know, even when they're playing teams that aren't in the 7A classification, right. they still got to show up and play, you know, their game against them? Well, you, you, look at, you look at teams regardless of classification based on players and coaches. So like when you look at a team like Ramsey, um, yeah, they're a 5A team, but they have you know, a state championship coach and Coach Ward, and they've got, you know, two already signed Division One players. So it doesn't matter that they're 5A. It doesn't matter what classification. When you play a team like Hazel Green, you know, Tim Miller has four, five, six state championships. Um, and, you know, and, and so out, we want to play against teams that have great players. We want to play against teams that have great coaches. And we want to play against all types of styles. So, like, for example, we played Lee Huntsville and we played Pleasant Grove, two teams, lower classification, really super talented, really super athletic, press you all over the place and make us play a style that we need to be able to see when we get to the playoffs. When we get to the playoffs, we're going to play teams that are big. We're going to play teams that are very fundamental and run a lot of set plays. We're going to play teams that are going to press. We're going to play teams that are going to trap. 
So when we construct our schedule for the season, I want to play teams that give us all of those different things so that when we get the playoffs and we're playing a team that pressed, we can go back and look at film from Lee Huntsville. We can go back and look at film from Pleasant Grove and we can say, okay, hey, we're going to play Hoover. They're going to press us. These are the things that those two teams did to us. What do we do right? What do we do wrong? What do we need to fix? If we didn't play any of those teams during the course of the season, then we'd be walking into a playoff game with no point of reference. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's kind of how we, you know, we, we, we don't, we want to, I would rather go in and, and I don't want to lose a game, but I'd rather go in with a chance of we had to play great to win or we're going to lose than to play somebody that's, you can walk on the floor, do everything wrong, but you're just you know, bigger, stronger, more experienced and talented, and you can win because mm -hmm. that gives you a false sense of how good you are. Yeah. Coming off of a state championship two years ago, um, when you look at this year's team, what are some similarities that you see with this group compared to that team? Uh, kind of what these guys said, just the hunger. You know, it, it's I, I, like when I think about like Dabo and when I think about Saban and I think about those guys and, you know, those guys that, that win a championship and then take their team back to the championship or potentially win back to back or whatever. Like, man, we all drank the Kool-Aid. We won that state championship and we we're having ring ceremonies and we're buying shirts and, you know, and it was just like, okay, you know, I, we're gonna, let's get our ring size for next year. I mean, we just, you know, it, and it was, it was not the same and it wasn't the same for me and and I knew better and I still got caught up in all that and you know walking off the floor last year versus Hewitt Trustful you know I've coached this is my 24th year of being a varsity coach I've coached like set almost 800 games and and you know there's probably five you know every coach has five games on one hand and five games on the other the five greatest wins that you can you'll always remember mm -hmm. and then there's five losses that hurt worse than anything and that Hewitt game last year is definitely in my top five if maybe not the the number one worst loss worst feeling you know that that I've ever had and I know it stung for for these guys and so I mean when we started area play and we played Hewitt the other night um, not to say we played Mountain Brook first, but when we played area in our, Hewitt in our second area game, like they were ready to rip the door off the wall to come out of the locker room to get ready to play. I mean, they were so geeked up and so focused. And, and so, yeah, when you compare those two teams, you know, we lost to, to Hoover in overtime, you know, when Sarah Ashley and those guys were freshmen. Um, it was the driving force. So, like I said, when, when those teams win it, you know, and then they manufacture motivation, you know, they're always talking about how Dabo, you know, will use anything to get his guys motivated mm -hmm. and stuff. I didn't do a good job after we won the state championship because uh, we, you know, we, we did not have that same hunger that, that we had the year before and then what I feel like this team has right now. Having won it, you obviously know what it takes. So what, what does this group need to do to put themselves in position to win a state championship? And where do you guys really need to improve the yeah. match at? Um, you know, there's obviously, you know, in 7A, there's not a sub-state game. So, you know, you got two area games and, you know, realistically, you don't even need to win the area championship because both of those teams are going to go. Um, but then, you know, you've got to go and, you know, you got to win the first area game. Then, you know, after the area championship game, you know, you got to win regional, you got to win regional, then you go to the semifinal and then the final. And, you know, all of those, I mean, you got to be able to play defense. You got to be able to rebound on both ends. And you got to put, you know, you, I mean, I know it sounds simple, but you got to put the ball in the basket. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we are a three point shooting team. Um, you know, we, we shoot about 33s a game. And, you know, we've got to make shots. Now, we, we really work hard on, you know, 
taking what the defense gives us. You know, some nights we've got to get to the basket more, and just kind of like what Sarah Ashley said, we got to get to the basket more. You know, some nights we've got to get offensive rebounds and we got to get putbacks. You know, sometimes we got to get you know our our defense to create some some opportunities for us to to get down and get some easy ones and those types of things. But you know, I mean. I think you got to be consistent. You got to be consistent for six games and know that every time, every game that you play, the team is going to be better. There's going to be more on the line. You know, the players are going to be better. The coaches are going to be better. The venue is going to be bigger. And, you know, and it's, you know, basketball is a strange game. I mean, you know, if you look at, look at, not NBA because the NBA has seven game series for a reason, mm -hmm. you know, because of, you know, somebody's going to steal a game here. Somebody's going to steal a game there. But, you know, most likely the best team's going to win in a seven game series. But when you're talking about the NCAA men's tournament or the NCAA women's tournament, you know, it's, you know, it's the ball can bounce a lot of different ways, you yeah. know, and you can look at, you know, the Dukes and the Kentuckys and, you know, they've got the, McDonald's All-Americans and all of those types of things. And, you know, you should say on paper, well, those guys should go win it, you know, but, you know, in a one game situation, uh, you know, a lot of things can happen. A lot of things can happen. Coach, appreciate you allowing yeah. me to come in. Uh, no problem. And visit with you and your program. And good luck to you guys the rest of this year. You guys, you know, like I've mentioned, been there, you've done that, you're experienced. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing how things end up for you and your team. Thank you, appreciate it. Yes, sir.